HVAC 360, episode number 81, High Stakes Humidification. everybody, welcome back to another episode of HVAC 360. I'm your host, Matt Nelson, opening the floodgates of HVAC knowledge onto your thirsty brains. Hey, if this episode is not enough, I'm just going to put it in the beginning here uh, so you can all get it. There are nuggets that I send out every Friday, my Friday mailing list. If you are interested in getting a little bit of written information into your email box, a little story every week, um, you can go up to HVAC 360 com and sign up for my list there. All right, and enough of that. This week, my guest is Mike Getz with the Northridge Company, a buddy of mine. And I said, hey, Mike, do you mind coming on the show and sharing a lessons learned with us that uh, you had recently and kind of go over that with us? And he said, absolutely. So let's hear what Mike has to share with us about humidification. <laughs> All right, today we're going to be talking with Mike Getz. He is a principal at Northrich, who is a manufacturer's rep. How are you doing today, Mike? Doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the show and uh, sharing some of the stuff that you have. Um, so, uh, so what do you have for us today in in, in terms of um, some lessons learned that you have? Well, at first, I I was thinking I would talk about a project where we approached a humidification uh, system just just recently and how we came about selecting the type of system that ultimately will get installed. Okay. So um, there, there's some challenges with the building. It's an, an all glass museum. So it, it's uh, there, that offers some ch other challenges aside from what I was looking for. Um, you know, so first off, we are the the representative for Nortec. So I'll give them a quick plug. Nortec Condair, they're the market leader worldwide in humidification. So one of the many reasons they're the leader is because they offer every type of system, which allows us to come in with a completely open mind and look at what's best for the owner and the project. So, uh, you know, I first, when I first approached this, I started out by asking questions to the own, owner to determine what the driving force was behind the project. So after talking for a while, we realized that they, the current system that they have, they have maintenance issues and it's very time consuming. And then what's driving the project is energy savings. So they were looking at energy savings more as a way to pay for the project and uh, not, not utilizing capital avoidance or maintenance as a uh, way to pay for it. So what we did is there is multiple air handlers in the system. So we, we walked the building and of course I, I, we always come in with a preconceived notion of what we think is going to uh, be the system that's going to be best for them. But it ultimately ended up not being what I thought, which was uh, made it uh, quite interesting. So uh, because Nortec offers all the different types of systems, I looked at, I had six in mind that I felt would be, would work. So first off, I started out with an isothermal system, which is electro steam generator. Uh, that would be Nortex model EL. And that's what they have now. They don't have Nortec, they have another brand, but um, those build up scale and the units that they have there, the, the cylinder is, uh, is metal and it's uh, square. So they have to get in there and scrape it. So the plastic ones, they just replace and throw them away. And so they, we, we talked about that and that we, we kept that option table because it is still a legitimate option for them. Cause it'd be easy to replace. They could leave the manifolds that are currently in the air handling units and go from there. So then we went to the next system, which was uh, condensing gas humidifiers and that's their model GS. It's as much lower operating cost, and they would be able to use the distributor that's in the air handling unit. Um, but because the building's glass, there was no place that they could run the flu out the out of the building. So that 
uh, offered. There was some challenges there, so that one was out. So, what would what would the flu be used for? Um, that would be because because it's a gas generator. Okay, it, it actually has a gas burner, and so you have to have a flu to go out. So, um, so the way the system is, you'd have to have multiple humidifiers, which wouldn't be a problem. It's just that there's no place to run the flus right, um, that in was... this particular building because it's glass. You know, it's that's that's obviously the issue there. Um, so then the next systems is what I we, we looked into was the adiabatic systems. And so we first looked at evaporative media. And honestly, that was the system I thought was going to be the best for them before I stepped foot inside the building. Um, because it also offers some cooling effect and being a glass building, they have some load issues with the sun. And so the problem is we went around to the air handling units, we opened them all up and there was absolutely no room to put it. I need 24 inches is all there's no water carryover and on those, um, that's our model ME. And so we, we looked at, and so there's no room inside the air handling unit. So we looked at the duct and you need it to be right around 500 feet per minute. You don't want to be much more than that. And the duct velocity, when I calculated it out, it was a thousand feet per minute or over. So if they would have been close, we could have done some things with the controls or something like that. So unfortunately that eliminated that system because we'd had to put it in the duct. And then uh, it also then eliminated, ruled out the ceramic media, which is our DL, which would have been a really nice system for them. It's a very low pressure drop system, but, um, because of the velocities, we, we couldn't make that work. So then we went to the next system in our mind was the, it's a compressed air and water nozzle. It's called the, say the AF system. It's an atomizing air fog system. So what we do is you put nozzles in the space and you run water uh, to the nozzle, but you also run compressed air. So you have an air compressor and then it meets at the system. Very nice system for, well, mostly for, we do it for a lot for industrial applications, but a lot, it gets used a lot in office spaces. Um, the problem is we are going to have to route these around some things because of the challenges of the, the building and the different rooms. Um, so then we came down to the very last system that we, we were thinking, and that's ended up what ultimately we're going to be going with. And it's uh, a direct room system, which is the ML. And what we're doing there is it's high, high pressure tubing. We run around. So you're, you're, you're pumping out high pressure water. So that particular system, we're able to hide the, the tubing around things and it'll look attractive. And they have some architecturally pleasing nozzles they can put in the room. And um, ultimately I think that, it, they're they're going to be happy with that system anyway. It's very pretty low maintenance. Um, it has a, a a skid that, and from that skid, they're able to route from that um, to the multiple areas uh, within the building. So we're currently laying out that building now. Um, and then the other thing is, I guess I forgot to mention is um, we're also going to recheck the humidification load for the space. Uh, we, we, they're, they're having a tough time right now with the system that they have keeping up at 35% RH is what they want for this um, particular building. And so we are going to, uh, we're recalculating the whole space just to, just to check that. Cause now would be the time it'd be, now would be the time to go ahead and add on to, to this system that they have. Right. So, so essential. So, so you have a, uh, basically an architect special, which is an all glass building. Um, you have the, the, uh, added complexity that it's a museum. So you have the, you know, obviously the artifacts that you need to have, uh, tightly controlled for the, for the humidity. Um, and they had a system that was put in and, and I guess it, you said it was undersized. Um, was there, was there anything else with the, 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 the type of unit? I mean, what, um, and, and how could it, how, know, how could the original it, unit get undersized? I guess. Well, and actually that's the, the issue. It's, it's, it's ultimately it's not necessarily undersized, but there's approximately six humidifiers coming up with that load. 
and because they have maintenance issues, there's typically one or two of them down a lot. So with that, then of course they're going to be short. And, um, so that, that is part of it. And, uh, and then also the, the events and the things that have happened in the facility have changed. So you have more economizer mode. So you have more load requirement than they probably originally in, intended. So it, it, it's, it probably is, it's not terribly undersized, but, I think what we're going to have to do is now would be the time to add it because it's inexpensive to add now why we're adding, we just add some additional heads. And, and why did they have this, the steel tanks originally? Um, I think honestly, no, normally you use the steel tanks when you have RODI. Uh, and that's a reverse osmosis. Just a, unfortunately, just what? a miss. Yes. Um, but unfortunately these were just misapplied. They just the wrong unit for that for domestic water gotcha so uh, basically basically because of the space and you know i mean obviously you, you run into that a lot of times when you're when you're designing things you got to put uh you know 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag and you have units that are very crunched together obviously even the duct work is a little bit constricted because they have to kick up the velocity um you know to to fit it through some some tight places and of the you know the the five systems that you kind of tried out um you know did a, a kind of a um, um analysis of five units that were kind of in, you know those units that go inside the uh, air handler you had to choose the sixth one that didn't correct correct um so uh, actually there was uh, two that would be in the space, but um, the other one would have to, an air compressor instead of the uh, high pressure water. Now, but yes, that, ultimately there was just no way to apply it with the air handling units that they had. Now, what kind of control is, uh, you know, obviously it's, it is, you've simplified it from, you know, having six systems down to, I'm assuming one with six zones. Is that right? Is that how you're handling it? Or Correct. That is correct. Yes. So is that it just correct. It, so it, it's just a matter of valving it differently, or what? That is correct. So the well, each each zone, which is what they have currently, they will have a, a control valve controlling that zone, and they will be able to use their current BMS system to control that. So they'll send in certain areas around the building as they need a higher humidity level. It'll just send a signal back to that control valve and open it up. Oh, fantastic. Well, um, we'll have to see how this works. Um, so I, I know that uh, in, a, in a couple of different uh, scenarios, a, a, a lot of times, you know, being able to control humidity is, is a little bit of an issue, um, you know, trying to figure out. I mean, is it relatively simple as far as, um, you know, humidistats being able to detect that and, and things like that? I mean, are those going to get replaced as part of this uh, project? They are not. Um, they're they're going to use the existing that they have now because they're getting the signal from the BMS, and they're they're currently pretty hidden. They're not like out in the out in the space where everybody can see them. So uh, they will be able to utilize what they already have, which, which is obviously saves some cost. But they already have a building management system in place. All right. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you sharing this, uh, uh, you know, issue and uh, some lessons learned with us, Mike. Um, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, Dan, we're back. Uh, thanks to our guest, Mike Getz, uh, with the Northridge Company. I really appreciate him spending a little extra time with me and talking about uh, this uh, problem that he had and uh, a situation with a project uh, that he was involved with. I know that we kind of detailed, he detailed a lot of products for you. So I'm going to list them in the show notes. If you go to the show notes, uh, I'll list them there. I know that Nortech has a great website and they even have some uh, YouTube videos that you can actually watch to see these things in action there. Just go to HVAC360.com, go to the show notes page and I'll have it all listed out there. 
All right, a couple of things from the interview that I just want to highlight again because I think they're worth reiterating. Obviously, with uh, humidification uh, issues or humidification in general, um, these are situations that you don't run into all that often uh, unless you're working, unless you're a firm or you specialize in that type of environment all the time. I think that there's, even from the detail aspect of it, you need to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row. Uh, and having a person like Mike or Mike's firm double check and back check what you're thinking, just using them as a sounding board, making sure that the loads are right. That's everything that's going to be able to allow you a successful project without any sort of issues after the fact. So I think that that maintenance is key in these type of humidification systems. Obviously, the current one that they had with the RODI and they they used instead of reverse osmosis water, they use standard water, which obviously it's it's possible, but it it increases the maintenance headache uh, that you have with this type of product. So that is one key aspect. You have to figure in the maintenance of all these different various systems, whether or not you pick you know one versus the other. One more thing that you want to make sure is that you negotiate enough room for change. I think that in this situation, they're really trying to pack things in there tightly. And you really, as an engineer, get minimal space, it, just enough. If, if there is not access needed, then there's not access given. So you really have to remember to fight your battles. And in a situation like this, it doesn't allow you any maneuverability. You know, you, sometimes you just, you can't get things right the first time and, and trying to implement a sol, you know, solution a uh, second time around when you have constraints like this, it totally changes uh, the nature. It just magnifies the problem and the cost of the solution. So, all right, that's wrapping it up. Thanks everybody for listening. I do appreciate you. Uh, every one of you. I know you're thirsty for knowledge. Again, hey, if you want little uh, uh, email nuggets that I send out once a week, go to HVAC360.com. Get on the list. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, at HVAC360. That's it for this week. Thanks. And remember, as always, know what you build and share what you know. 